Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. Saints put on the full pads today out in Irvine, California. Sean Fazan's out there with the team for Fox 8, joining us now on the Tim's Firearms Hotline to talk a little black and gold. Sean, thanks for the time. How are you? I'm doing well. Nice and, uh, I don't know, it's like 80 degrees out here in L.A., so uh, we're enjoying ourselves. Don't rub it in, but we appreciate you joining us a little <laughs> bit. Uh, look, um, any of the injuries so far appear to be significant in the sense that they could linger into the season, or is it just a lot of camp bumps and bruises to this point? Uh, at, at, right now, we categor- categorize it as bumps and bruises, but, um, you know, DA was asked about Marshawn Lattimore today, and he said, you know, it is a little concerning, but I'm not losing sleep over it. He's dealing with that hip flexor. He's a guy who's dealt with injuries the last couple of seasons. So kind of put it in that category for now. But if it lingers into the regular season, then obviously there will be a situation. Sell the very lead with the calf injury today is interesting because um, he dealt with that calf injury a lot last offseason, last training camp, and it lingered into the season. He was getting first-team reps at left guard, but kind of been rotating in and out with Lucas Patrick uh, the last three or four practices. So that's something to certainly watch. And then, Brian Brzee's foot injury, didn't get much detail on that. Um, obviously, he's one you know, they have high hopes for, and it's going to the second season with the Saints at defensive tackle. But um, he hasn't been available the last couple of days, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. Let's talk about um, that, that battle at a guard between Saldaveri. And, and like, how do you handicap that as we're, we're this early in camp? Uh, I would Look, they went into camp with Saldaveri as the first team, but uh, fairly quickly, uh, Lucas Patrick was rotated in. Now, in those first team reps, Sal is getting the last two, but the problem with that is because Lucas Patrick is also the second team center, so they're not just going to let him go all first team reps at guard and all second team reps at center. So, um, if I were handicapping it right now, it, it appears to me uh, that Lucas Patrick, the veteran, may uh, be slightly ahead in that battle. We were kind of hoping to see what they would look like in pads. Got a little bit of sell to vary, but then he exited practice early, and Lucas Patch was getting the majority of those reps. So if I had to guess right now, I would probably put it at, uh, at uh, Lucas Patch with the first team. Let's talk back up quarterbacks. Uh, how uh, heavily contested is that spot? Contested. It's going to be a fun one to watch. Um, both guys have made uh, plays when they've gotten opportunities to run with twos. Today was Hainer's turn. Uh, he had a big-time connection to Mason Tipton. Um, Saturday was Spencer Rattler's best practice as a Saint. Uh, he ran with the twos that day, so they've been battling back and forth. Two extremely confident players, uh, productive players. Um, you know, Hayner had a really good training camp last year, but it kind of faded a little bit once the preseason started. I think preseason is going to be the thing that really determines uh, the winner of that QB2 battle. Let's talk Chase Young. Uh, I think when he was signed and the neck uh, ailment came out, the thought was he might miss a couple of weeks of, of training camp. It appears that he hasn't missed much of anything. What have you seen from him? Uh, look, that's probably been probably the biggest development of today was that he was, he'd been doing some stuff off to the side, but in their first day of pads, he did some teamwork. Um, he was in on three plays, ran with the second team, got two pressures. Um, Dennis Allen said after practice that he was, uh, the timeline of, for his recovery may have been accelerated a little bit due to the work that he, you know, did in recovery and rehab, and you know, obviously the surgeon and uh, the work they did, and obviously with the training staff. So to me, uh, that was easily the biggest development today was Chase Young not just participating but doing well, and the fact that he appears to be quite a bit ahead of schedule is great news for the Saints because he's got the potential to be a big time player now for the defensive end position. So um, that was a huge development for the Saints today. Well, let's handicap that that edge spot. Obviously, Granderson had a great year last year and assigned that extension. Cam Jordan did not have a productive year last year. You bring in Chase Young. How do you think that that looks right now? Well, so far it's been Cam and Carl as the two first team uh, defensive ends, and then when we go second team, it's been uh, Peyton Turner, who's quietly had a pretty good camp uh, the last couple of practices as well, and Isaiah Fossey with the second team. Today was the first day we saw Chase Young rotate in with the second team. He got like uh, D.A. said, three uh, three plays during that, that team session. So, um, at least for now, it's Cam and Carl, but if Chase Young continues to, to to show out and be the type of pressure player that you know, he's been throughout his career when he's been healthy and he can stay healthy, it's going to be hard to keep him off the field. Um, like I said, Peyton Turner's done pretty well. Isaiah Fossey still got 
little ways to go, but he had a couple moments in the first couple of practices before the pads came on. So that'll be a fun one to watch as well when the preseason gets here. Is there a chance that Chase Young cuts into Cam Jordan's playing time as opposed to Carl Granderson's? Yes, I think that's possible. Um, if he can prove he can get after the quarterback, especially on passing situations and third down, I think that's that's possible as well. And look, there's also times where you know Cam kicks inside um, in certain passing situations. I know last year towards the back end of the year, he was really limited to first and second down. Um, I think all options would be on the table uh, when it came to that because they've got to, you know, get better at that pass rush spot, and you know, you bring in a guy like Chase Young to do just that. So um, I do think that would be uh, a possibility, especially with how well Carl Granderson seems to have just kind of improved each and every year. So it'd be hard to keep him off the field as well. So yeah, I certainly think that's a possibility. Sean Fazan's our guest, Fox Eight in New Orleans. He is uh, out in Irvine. Saints put the pads on for the first time today. The uh, the it guy of uh, of camp to this point has been Mason Tipton. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, about what he, you've seen from him? Well, well, ball goes his way. He catches it. He had another <laughs> big play today. It's usually a, 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 a deep ball <laughs> that he catches. He had a, two huge catches uh, from Spencer Rattler Saturday. Another one from Nathan Peterman on Saturday. He caught a touchdown. One of the earlier practices, either the second or third practice from Nathan Peterman. Um, on a deep ball. And then today, kind of ran a double move uh, up the field, and Jake Hayner hit him in stride for another big play. So um, he's not just making plays, he's making big plays, and he certainly caught the attention of Dennis Allen. Uh, he, he compared him to Chris Harris, who obviously the other side of the ball, but a guy no one really knew a whole lot about, but all of a sudden just kept making play after play after play. He's a little undersized, he's about 5'11", um, but he's got speed. Um, and when the ball goes his way, he makes a big play. So um, he's definitely gotten noticed uh, the first, what, five practices of camp here. All right, one more player before we get to some uh, big picture stuff. I mean, what's Kendra Miller's situation, and, and what does this all mean? Um, hasn't been out since the uh, first day of work where he was doing some uh, some you know, drills, warm-ups. We were actually right in front of us, and all of a sudden he uh, walks over to the trainer, points to his hamstring. They do have a little discussion. And he exits practice. Um, CA was asked about it afterwards. He was not happy. He says the player's got to keep himself healthy. I think this is a little bit more of a learn how to be a pro type situation, take care of your body, as opposed to any kind of freak football injury. Um, so he's been spotted here and there, just kind of off doing some rehab work. But for the most part, we haven't seen much of him since that early uh, part of first of the first practice. So uh, as of now, he's just he's getting his rehab in, and hopefully he'll be back on the field at some point. How do you handicap his ability to make the team and be an impact player this year? I mean, going in, I think a lot of people had you know high hopes for him to not just be a uh, make the team, but be the second running back. I mean, coming off the year Jamal Williams had a season ago, which wasn't very productive, and he's getting a little bit you know older in his career. You know, they drafted Kendra Miller in the third round to be a a guy that can contribute, and um, that that soundbite from Dennis Allen after the first practice, that answer was it was kind of a. Uh, it caught a lot of people off guard because it wasn't just he's got to get healthy. He's got to learn how to get healthy to make the team. It's kind of what he was uh, talking about there. So um, I don't know if he's in jeopardy yet, but certainly something that would probably be in his best interest to get healthy in a hurry. <laughs> no question about that. All right, you've seen a lot of training camps, a lot of Sean Payton, a lot of Drew Brees, a lot of Pete Carmichael. Can you give us any appreciable defense on the offensive side through through a week and change? Absolutely. I mean, if you really watch, it's been fun to watch kind of how this offense is diagrams and, and the concepts that come together with the basic premise of uh, running that wide zone, running the football to the edge. And when you watch how the blocking scheme, how it all comes together, and then what they do off of that when it comes to bootlegs, and you know, the underneath drags, the over routes, the, uh, the backside in cuts, it's really been something to watch. And when you kind of watch it get installed day in and day out, you, you, you see why this offense has so much success because of, they're very deliberate in what they want to do, and they make no bones about what they want to do. That's run the outside zone, run the wide zone, and then do everything off of that. So it's been a, it's been fun to watch. I saw a very picturesque video of you and Juan Kikane out there and uh, talking Saints uh, out there by the water. Tell us uh, where you can find all your content as y'all are out there at camp. Yeah, well, we got all of our stuff at FoxAteLive.com, uh, Fox8, uh, 4, 5, 9, and 10, and then our YouTube channel, the Fox8 Overtime Podcast. Uh, we have our latest one up talking about it was the All State podcast we did, kind of a uh, kind of recapping what was going on, big picture stuff with the Saints, and uh, find that on our YouTube channel as well. So check it out. We're everywhere. We're here for the long haul. Enjoy the weather and the football. Thanks, Sean. All right, bud. 
East John Fazan, Fox 8, down in New Orleans, talking a little bit of Saints. If you're looking for our Saints content, you can always find it at Saints. Uh, Hunt on Saints on YouTube, that uh, that segment right there. Go up on uh, Hunt on Saints a little bit later this afternoon. So uh, if you're looking for Saints content as they uh, are a little bit further away than LSU will be here uh, coming up on Thursday, you can always find it on YouTube or wherever you find your audio on demand. Hey, it's Hunt. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button. Leave your comments in the section below. And hit that subscribe button so you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.